Good morning. Thank you for joining uh, this fourth Everyday Nissan webinar dedicated to healthcare. Once more, uh, thank you for the attendance of all the ones who had the opportunity to join uh, previous seminars. Uh, they are still available online for the other. You can just go to the Everyday Nissan website and you will have the opportunity to watch the replay that is available uh, on the site. Today, we will be speaking about RFID, specifically focusing on the advantage to help patient safety and also obviously to manage the supply chain. I will be giving that presentation together with Frank Smith. Frank is business development manager, intelligent labels for Europe. I myself, Benoit Jourde, I am business development manager for Healthcare Europe. Looking at the agenda, and perhaps before going to the agenda, you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Please just call down and you will have a zone dedicated to this. We will be stopping once a while to be able to answer all questions. If we have too much looking at the time, we will be following up with you offline. So don't worry, all questions will be, will be answered. Be careful, if you type questions, they are visible, visible to the entire audience. But questions will also be part of the recording because within a, a few hours, by the end of the day, you will get access to the deck and within 48 hours, you will get access to the video. And once more, questions will be part of it. I'm gonna disable the chat so that everybody will be asking questions in the same area and we don't get confused. In the chat, we were just adding, as we speak, uh, a few tips if people have a connection issue. So I will leave that for an extra few seconds before switching it off. Back to the agenda. First, we will be exploring what are the different challenges that the healthcare industry is facing. And obviously, as an answer, how RFID can help to answer and to transform this industry. We will be spending time giving you real case study based on the experience we have been building in that specific sector over the past years across the globe. And we will also be spending a bit of time on what is unique to Everett Nissan, besides offering RFID inlays, as you know, Everyday Nissan is also in the self-adhesive part and we are supplying pharma-dedicated adhesives, meaning that here we can combine the two and customize for unique pharma applications the right product. On this, I will hand over to Frank. Thank you very much, Benoit. And of course, also welcome from my side. Well, we at Avery Dennison at the moment are in the business of unlocking new possibilities. We are opening our eyes and minds. We listen to the market very closely. And we see ourselves as an enabler for an entire smart supply chain. We intend on inspiring and building a better tomorrow. And this we would like to do with you, with our customers and partners like yourself. And we as Avery Dennison therefore keep on investing in innovative technologies, IoT startups. With the integration of SmartTrack, we are now already the world's largest supplier of RFID labels and tags, and we can check any item in the supply chain, from low cost, ready to print inlays for item level identifications for blisters or vials, up to extremely durable tags for returnable transport items, in distribution for medication or raw materials, and with the acquisition of SmartTrack, we also have a full range of sensor tags that can capture even additional information for the supply chain, like moisture or temperature, which is so important in the pharmaceutical supply chain. We believe in teamwork. It's one of our core values at Avery Dennison, and therefore we like to work in an era for the ecosystem. If you work with Avery Dennison, we will ensure you we will deliver a full solution of suite to solve your challenges. And especially in the current COVID-19 situation, we have to realize there are problems in the world. And we feel that there's a potential for technology to solve these. So we see ourselves and also as a solution enabler. 
we don't just sell technology for the sake of it, but invest in technology that helps everybody. And we feel that there always needs to be a purpose for technology, for invention. It should be used to fix and improve things and create a world which is better connected. It's way more in sync. And with RFID, we also seek to prevent waste to ensure the demand in the supply chain is more in harmony. As an example, a third of all food is wasted. And actually, we think that that's, that's an amazing percentage. I was flabbergasted to hear that. And we really feel that RFID can be technology to bring that, those percentages down. And also consumer patients are getting way more demanding on knowing where products come from. RFID can play an important role in enabling that transparent supply chain. And we also see in the current COVID-19 situation how important it is to track products to ensure you have the right quality products at the right time at the right place. And pharma is nowadays a huge emerging market for RFID to trace medicine, to prevent fraud in gray markets, but also to enable authentication. We have to make sure the right raw materials are used and we do not also waste finished products to create a better future world. So why Avery Dennison for Intelligent Label Solutions? Well, together with our partners, we are very well positioned to address these supply chain challenges I just spoke about with our whole Intelligent Label Solutions. We have industry expertise for the pharma and healthcare sector and products tailored for the industry. Not only for the pharma and healthcare, but also for many other industries, such as apparel, logistics, automotive, food, just to name a few. We have invested, of course, we have now a global capacity of 12 billion inlays a year uh, and have a comprehensive product portfolio, including the SmartTrack product range. And we also see that the digital ID technologies such as RFID provide a visibility and a transparency needed to transform industry supply chains, but also reduce the systematic impact on the environment and the world we currently live in. So we recently published a report called IoT and the Imminent Supply Chain Revolution for which we conducted an extensive survey carried out with a panel over 700 C-suite leadership roles from retail, logistics, supply chain industries. And the, the, this report explores the, the likely role that the IoT will play in global supply chain operations, but also consumer experience in the close future. And this survey actually showed us that 63% of global C-suite and leadership roles believe that the current pandemic will bring supply chains even to a sharper focus. And looking at the, the current situation we are in, that number actually seems low. So COVID-19 has created a huge shift in demand and, and rapidly changing buying behaviors. And it's putting pressure on agility and speed that supply chains can offer. And those that have adapted the best are those that have the full visibility of the supply chain. And digital ID enables this. Thanks, Frank. So, so now if we look at technology to digitalization, so, you know, Ever Denison has been in the barcode and QR code industry via the self-adhesive raw material. You know, we have developed the right face stock and the right adhesive to fulfill this market. Nowadays, we speak about UHF, also named as REN RFID, and NFC, both being RFID solutions. But Everdinson is also looking for the future. I guess you may have heard about printed electronics and passive Bluetooth. Give you an example of printed electronics. We have invested in a startup named Pragmatic that is basically printing, to some extent, microchips. We speak about polymer organic-based microchips. So this is for the future, but this future is basically tomorrow in 2021. Passive Bluetooth is even more exciting. Here, we made also some investment in another startup named Williot. What they do? 
they basically have developed a microcircuit that does not need a battery. The system is smart enough to harvest itself the energy from surrounding radio frequency. And you can just use your phone to interact with the device. So not only you can get information about geolocalization, you can also get information about sensing. You can also, if you want, use it for tamper proof. So all those technologies are definitely for the future, but we speak about short-term future. Now we're going to focus definitely on the core of RFID, being NFC and being UHF. So now let's explore what's in for healthcare. Starting point is obviously, as Frank was introducing, the supply chain management, the supply chain uh, visibility. This is something that has been demonstrated multiple times in different verticals, starting from the apparel industry, that is definitely valid for, for pharma. So it allows you to track at the item level, and therefore you are increasing the accuracy, your visibility from the point of manufacturing uh, till the end, providing that you are equipped with the right reader. But it's not over, specifically in healthcare. What you care in healthcare is about patient and patient safety. So this is where RFID can also ensure the well-being of patients. Once more, you go down to the item level and you will be increasing for sure stock management, but also linked to stock management. You have the management of the expiration date and making sure that the stock you have is still fit for purpose, that you're not taking any risk because you are missing products, whereas you believe it is in stock, but uh, the shelf life is gone. So you cannot use it for, for, the, for the patient. So just quickly here, we, we made two categories. So once more on the left, starting with the inventory supply chain, faster to, stack, to check the stock. Obviously you remove all the paperwork, the manual work and the error associated to it. And obviously it's slow. And you can identify if there is any obsolete stock. So this will be a, a benefit for the patient at the end. Linked to that, you can also reduce medical errors. Think about hospitals. Not only they have to manage their stocks, but then they have to prepare for every day the medicine for the patient. And as soon as you have human in the equation, you can have a few errors in terms of associating the wrong drugs to the patient. If you have RFID involved, you avoid those types of, of, uh, of mistakes. And we will be exploring with some uh, more case study on that, on that part. Moving, uh, just looking uh, up, we have, a, we have a question. So I think, uh, let me read quickly. What are the true benefits of RFID versus conventional barcode? I leave that one to, to you, Frank, please. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a, it's a good question. Uh, and of course, you have the traditional benefits of RFID compared to barcode that you don't need line of sight. You can read many, many items in one go, which is so convenient for this inventory management Benoit spoke about. Uh, but also a big advantage is that you can use a, a temple loop, for example, where you can place a, a loop over a, a medical packaging and when it's then being opened, you can automatically detect this because this opening, this breaking of a temple loop is auto irreversibly stored in the chip. Uh, there's also possibilities of uh, encrypted encoding. So you can also create a very high level of authentication with RFID, which no other technology can, uh, can deliver actually. Okay, thanks, and good introduction for my slide now. So here, what, what you have uh, are basically the different use cases within the healthcare segment. I will not be tackling them all, but I have been highlighting a few that I would like to, to illustrate. First one on primary care, uh, we already spoke about it. It's uh, basically managing all the consumables uh, that the hospital will be having. So I will be spending a bit more time uh, on uh, anti-tempering, for pharmaceutical uh, packaging, Frank was introducing this. Indeed, uh, not only RFID can be used, but also more and more NFC with a tamper loop that can be embedded in the tamper label. And this means that the patient 
by himself can confirm if the if the box, if the pack has been open previously. And indeed, the microchip will be storing that information and you cannot hack it. You, know? you can do that also with regular RFID, UHF, but then uh, the patient cannot be involved in the equation. Medical device, authentication. You know, think about uh, the following application. You have a smart in injector and you need to plug the cartridge inside. So what you care first is to make sure that the cartridge is a genuine one. So the cartridge with the right, let's say, NFC or even UHF label will be able to speak with uh, the into injector. And the into injector uh, will be able to confirm it's a genuine product. So you can move ahead with the injection. So this is typical use case uh, that will first prevent any you know, wrong injection because it's a fake drug. Next one, laboratory. Uh, you know, in those times of COVID, tests are taking place everywhere. Massive volume. As soon as you speak massive volume and you have to externalize, you have the risk to lose track. Where are they? And also you have the risk to lose who is the owner, who is the patient behind. And uh, we are currently working in UK with NHS on helping them uh, to get more visibility on their overall uh, test taking place at third party. Once more, this is something that RFID can help you with at a decent cost. So again, illustration of what you can do, but there is much more. I will leave you uh, the deck uh, later on uh, for you to go through. Market trends, you know, uh, on one side, nothing new, but the pandemic has been accelerating that situation. E-pharmacy, we are all stuck at home, right? Uh, even people for clinical trials cannot go to the hospitals. They are asked to stay at home. So there is a way, people are looking for a way to make sure that things get home, that there is no issue with the origin. And associate to that, there is a need more than ever to be able to interact with the patient. And this is where NFC can help because everybody is equipped with a phone. You can think about starting a bit of interaction. Can be as basic as e leaflet. You know, you tap and you get more tuto video on how to use properly the medical device uh, if it's a nasal spray. Uh, and it can also go further. You know, if you need to get some information about the posology, you can also get in touch with with your doctor. So this basically. Uh, pandemic is forcing the overall industry to think about how to stay connected with the patient and guide the patient. Aside, authenticity, security is still a big topic across the globe. Uh, this, this industry uh, uh, is worth uh, more than 200 billion uh, US dollars uh, for, for, the, for the fake uh, manufacturer. So governments across the globe are trying to react. In Europe, uh, back a few years ago, uh, the falsified medicine directive has been implemented. Russia is also moving this year. US has been looking at what they call the Drug Supply Chain Security Act that will be postponed by three years. It was supposed to start November this year. It will be pushed later on in three years. And uh, again, uh, this one for North America, and I'm going to read that, uh, that text, outline steps to build an electronic interoperable system to identify and trace prescription drugs. And uh, today it's just a list of specific prescription drugs. Over time, we foresee to have all drugs getting inside this DSCSA, not only the one on prescription, but also over the counter. So this is also a place where RFID can help to give a digital ID to each single product and simplify this overall transparency of the supply chain. And I can tell you, we have seen in this pandemic time how fragile the supply chain of medicine has been. And I can tell you offline, having conversation with players in the market, some you know, we're saying if I will have already invest in RFID, I'm pretty sure my life and my supply chain will have been much, much easier to manage in those uh, specific days. 
Handing over to you, Frank. Yeah, thank you, Benoit. And picking up on the uh, supply chain transparency, yeah, we we see that this visibility throughout the whole supply chain is one of the leading areas for pharmaceutical and healthcare applications. So being able to ensure that medicines and medical devices uh, that Benoit spoke about travel through the supply chain as intended is something that many patients do not even consider, but it's vitally important. Uh, drug companies are, of course, required to show this chain of custody from the point of manufacture throughout the whole supply chain. And the Drug Supply Chain Security Act, which Benoit was already referring to, is, is driving traceability requirements through every step of the supply chain. And yeah, we, as mentioned, we are confident that more types of medicine will be added eh, in the next few years. And as we are making our way to this current pandemic, we have all seen how fragile these supply chains are. Eh? Uh, Benoit already mentioned this, but it, we already also have seen this with, with stocked out toilet paper eh? or any other distributed item where we really see that uh, RFID being a way to help provide better visibility throughout the supply chain, improve efficiency of how goods are distributed. And large brand owners and pharma now realize they need to prevent fake products landing in the supply chain because of patient safety. But also because of their reputation, of course, and they want to protect their own brand. And looking at uh, med medical equipment, for example, on site in hospitals or in elderly care, uh, tracking of these high value items has had a very positive impact on the ability to locate items quickly. I've seen hospitals going from having million dollar crash cards for every single department to just one per floor because they could monitor the card's location through ROVID and real-time location services. So like already mentioned, also inventory management is an area of concern for the pharmaceutical industry. By tagging every stock medication with an ROVID label, hospital pharmacies are eliminating the manual process of checking inventory. They're able to keep electronic records of medicine locations, expiration, recalls, etc. And I always learn to say never 100% in the area of the industry, uh, but we'll say it brings a 99% accuracy of your inventory. And we tested, of course, eh, our area of the tags against manual input on clipboards, uh, against barcode scanning. And as one might expect, manually writing down data on a clipboard was by far the slowest. And barcode scanning was two times faster than manually writing data, but that's still pretty good. But ROVD was, of course, able to top the barcode method, scanning data 12 times faster than uh, any barcode scanning. Also, ROVD tech scanning was nearly perfect in accuracy for inventory management. Barcoding was roughly 92%. Writing down on a clipboard, 85% accurate. And we also know that, for example, pharmacy kits, they contain 10 to 20% expired or even incorrect medication, uh, which takes a lot of manual labor to find the items to replace. And a unique ROVD number really gives each product its own unique digital identity, the digital twin. And then this unique identity helps eliminate any human error uh, therewith increasing inventory accuracy dramatically as every product can be accounted for using this corresponding ID number and also enabling expiry date management uh, Benoit also referred to. And all of this for the most important goal for us all, patient safety. I'll pause a bit to hear if there are any questions that have come in. We, we have, we have, and we have two so that we can share. I guess I'm going to take the first one. Does RFID can improve patient adherence? Uh, this is indeed a, an assumption. Uh, as you may have heard, this is many coming first from North America. You, you have this concept of pay for performance, basically value-based payment, where healthcare you know, authorities will be rewarding uh, the big pharma medicine based on the efficiency. But the big pharma will have to demonstrate the efficiency. And one path for this industry to be able to prove 
that the drug is really working better than any other one is to improve the patient compliance. That is no more than 50% at the best on chronic disease. And to do that, you need to get in touch with, with the patient. And you need to have this loop patient slash doctor. So indeed, you know, a lot of uh, path is to have uh, phones using an app and the app with a phone allow you to interact with the medicine. You can use a once more NFC for this and you can monitor how and you can guide the patient to make sure he's using, he's taking the right dosage at the right time. And this will be driving, you know, performance of the medicine and will be hopefully uh, helping the patient to feel better. And based on that, based on statistics, based on, on, on those proven performance, health authorities uh, will be decide what are the drugs that will be reimbursed and the ones that will not. So indeed, you know, patient adherence is one of the key challenges of the pharmaceutical industry, of this healthcare space, and everybody is trying to find solutions to improve this. And uh, indeed, uh, RFID is, position, is well positioned to be an enabler in that, in that direction. We have a second question, uh, Frank, that I uh, will leave to you. I'm just reading it. How the RFID ships is loaded with data? Are there solution providers? How is the technology integrated into the production process? Yeah, thanks. It's a good question. Eh? Uh, like I already mentioned in the beginning, we work within an ecosystem uh, of RFID providers. So we work together with a lot of system integrators all over the world, also in Europe, of course, that can uh, actually make sure yeah, you read the RFID tag on, on several occasions during your production processes. To answer your question on, on has the, have the RFID chip data on it? Yeah, they come with a pre-encoded uh, number, but you can also encode them, of course, on site. Uh, you can stick the labels on your packaging, you can integrate them in your packaging, there are all kinds of different ways to do this. Uh, and as mentioned, we have solution partners who can actually support you with that, with the right hardware, with the right setup, and also making the connection to your existing uh, software systems. Okay, thank you, Frank. So I hand over to you. I guess we were on, on that page, right? Inventory management recall. Exactly. Because we all know that uh, our recalls can be a very painful process for pharma companies. And the crux many times being a lack of this efficient interconnected system. When it comes to manufacturing, many pharmaceutical companies, uh, we still see that they are printing out standard operating procedures. And they're signing off on training using still physical documents and many times populating batch record by hand. And yeah, like we've seen before, a manually inputting data uh, introduces human error, which slows down manufacturing and the recall process and ultimately costing time, resources. And manual data entry is also imprecise, which leads to pharmaceutical companies putting out more lots from the shelves than were likely affected. And, and using this Drug Supply Chain Security Act, this electronic interoperable system, and many issues with the current recall system will be resolved. Uh, with this electronic system, the supply chain will be more visible and enabling companies to identify also the counterfeit drugs far more easily. The new system will also heighten efficiency, accuracy, as specific lots and eventually products in those lots will be identified way better in the recall and preventing also good products to be wasted, to be discarded. And we feel that RFID technology can support this as no other technology and support the visibility of the supply chain, which is so much needed. Let's look at a case study for supply chain transparency. Let's have a look at uh, Hanmei Pharmaceutical. Well, um, pharmaceutical medical goods are one of the most sensitive supervised products worldwide. And it means that any product tracking and management system must be completely reliable and proof against theft, fraud, counterfeiting. And Hanmei Pharmaceutical employs RAIN RFID to increase efficiency, monitor product movements, but also to help them carry out government-regulated quality management. 
and the company already uses Rainer of ID to track 60 million products annually. And it starts from packaging to shipping to picking, enabling a fully automated process from the receipt of the order to the shipment of the pack card into the wholesaler. And already since 2009, uh, they have been demonstrating best practice in the handling of the sensitive pharmaceutical products throughout the whole supply chain. And they installed then, back then, an automated picking system to work with RFID. Using RAIN RFID tags, readers, to identify products and to then collect, box ship those items without the need of any human intervention. And actually, the only manual portion of the process is an inspection carried out by the handy staff as each box is packed. And these boxes, they come with a pre-encoded tag, which is linked to the order information. They are then run through a shipment verifier. This is a conveyor. It's monitored by an in-pinch error of an e-reader. And then the tags on each item and the carton itself are read. And if all the tags match the order information, the carton is verified and proceeds to the dispatch process. And then actually the fun starts because then they take RFID to the next phase of the supply chain to the, at local pharmacies, store employees, but also representatives of Hanmi can use RFID handout readers to very easily take inventory, uh, immediately transmitting this wirelessly to the central information server of Hanmi. And this analytics provides valuable visibility of, of inventory of sales level. And this pedigree system from Hanmi, which is used to manage the distribution of individual drugs being produced by pharmaceutical companies and the dispatch to the hospitals and pharmacies where they then sold to patients, is here was just not an efficient distribution management system. It can also prevent the distribution of health threatening fake medication and solve the problem of unlicensed medicines being distributed in the whole supply chain, which Benoit also spoke about. And again, here, easy expiry date management for Hanmi itself, but also for the parties further down the supply chain, like the hospitals and pharmacists, is very easy enabled now with the use of RAIN RFID. So this, this whole solution brings key improvements to the pharmaceutical supply chain. To, to summarize, the, they have seen increased accuracy and efficiency of shipping process. Uh, Hanmi has greatly reduced the shipment error as carton content is verified before shipment, uh, improve inventory visibility, and there with the customer service, where with each item tagged, accuracy and visibility of the store inventory are greatly improved, reducing out of stocks, labor effort and cost, and enabling also efficient return of recalled items which we spoke about. Very important, we, they are empowering patient safety. Automated inventory enforces management of expiration dates of products on the shelf and can prevent sales of counterfeit products. And last but not least for the company was that they now have accurate forecast product demand. The increased visibility of sales by product, region, uh, and even season raise the ability of Hanmi to forecast customer demand and to anticipate replenishments. Thank you, Frank, and sorry I was too impatient to move back to hospitals. Right, so, you know, a few minutes ago, we were referring to the challenge the central pharmacy are facing in hospitals. So a partner of Ivor Denison uh, named Kitschek has developed an overall solution, not only the software, but a specific cabinet to test those uh, pharma kit. Today, they have more than 500 hospitals in North America who have adapted that solution. And that solution basically works in the following way. You have a tray with all the medicines that are associated with the kit, for meaning a specific patient. And the system, each single product has a tag, a UHF RFID tag. And when you enter the tray in the, in the machines, you will be reading, and obviously, right away, within three seconds, you know if any items are missing. You know that if you have an expiration uh, issue on the shelf life of the medicine, and also, you are sure that, by error, there is not the incorrect items on the, on the plate. So this is something that people were doing previously, but they were doing that by hand. And they were doing that in two steps. First, you were having an operator checking manually. And then 
a pharmacist was coming to make a second check. Altogether, it takes typically 30 minutes. And it kills, as you can understand, a bit of added value times of the pharmacist that will certainly be spending more times in more useful operations uh, aside. So basically, you go from 30 minutes down to three, and you are removing uh, the risk of human error. So that's why in North America, uh, this solution has been spread so fast that now, directly, the pharmaceutical manufacturers are tagging at manufacturing embedding the inlay within the self-adhesive labels instead of asking and forcing the hospitals to tag when they enter the central pharmacy. So we see this solution is taking a scale and clearly at the end, not only the hospital is getting benefits in terms of efficiency, in terms of reducing error, but the patient once more is getting the first benefit because uh, you, you are helping him uh, in, in, in terms of uh, patient safety. Still in the same type of area, uh, the concept of intelligent cabinet. So here you have a closed cabinet equipped with a few antenna so that you can read any items that are inside. As a matter of fact, as soon as you bring something away, the system will record. Therefore, he will be able to start automatically a replenishment. And the system being smart can also send a warning if after a few weeks, a few months, some products are not moving in that cabinet, meaning that there is a risk once more on the expiration date. And you can do that also still knowing who is getting in, who is getting out. What I mean is that to be able to open that cabinet, you need to be equipped with, for instance, an NFC card so that, that is linked to an individual so that you have the full traceability about what's happening. And if you speak about drugs that are a bit sensitive, this gives you the full visibility. And once more, you are sure that you don't have any stock out and you are minimizing all the work for the hospitals. They don't have to place any more any order. The system is taking care of doing that automatically. So here, once more, we are mainly speaking of a combination of RAIN RFID on the tag for each single item inside and uh, RFID NFC for the operator that needs to open the security on the door. Let me look now at the last case study. I hand over to you, Frank, while I'm looking if we have more questions. Please go ahead. Shall we pause if there are any questions? Yeah, so yeah. I do see two. One from David. Does RFID solution comply with the European anti confer uh, directive, so the falsified medicine directive, which is currently supported by 2D? So I will say that for, for Europe, you know, the, it's, it's, it's too late. Indeed, RFID uh, would have been able to answer to that requirement but overall authorities in europe have not decided neither the pharma industry to go in the direction of rfid but yes rfid is compatible with this overall technology but it was considered as being premature to adopt the technology that's why for the coming move of serialization in north america we definitely believe that RFID will be more considered than it has been here in Europe. And we have another question from, from Dean. I see you are talking a lot around pharma, assuming the RFID can withstand the sub-zero temperature that are enforced with various medication and vaccine. So clearly, an RFID inlay can resist to extreme temperature going below zero or going above zero. Uh, the challenge will be if you want to be able to read at, for instance, minus 80. Uh, the solution cannot do that. But once more, the tag can survive this temperature. And once you go back to, I will say, uh, decent temperature still being frozen, you will be able to, to, to read. 
So at the end, the reading will be the sum of the tag and your reading infrastructure. And uh, definitely, together with our partners, system integrators, we can develop case by case solution. But once more, you don't have this limitation of the zero degree as a temperature. Huh? You can further go down to to have a solution working uh, in this environment. I, I don't know, Frank, if you want to add anything to that specific question. No, you're very correct. Eh? It's it's hard to read at very low temperatures eh, below zero degrees. But once it's back up, uh, you're fully able to read them again. Eh? That's not a problem. OK, so I leave you to speak about the last case study. Yeah, that I'm which sure is, is actually, popular. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which is very recent uh, in the current situation and eh, the current COVID-19 situation. Well, um, we have teamed up with a blockchain startup, Suku. We've developed a digital verification technology to authenticate COVID-19 testing kits to enable instant verification and provide this end-to-end -end supply chain transparency. Well, how does it work then? We equipped these COVID-19 testing kits with our uh, Circus NFC tag. And then the whole technology utilizes our Avery Dennison digital identity platform, which we have, to feed the tag data, which we capture already at production, to the Sucus blockchain-based supply chain application. And the data from the mobile engagement then confirms the authenticity and provenance of the product tagged, reassuring patients and ultimately increasing trust, of course. Um, and customers can, for example, also view their purchase price of the person, uh, which we all now need compared to global average, providing a transparency to them uh, to help in the fight against price gouging. Um, the test kit technology also allows organization to access real-time data from the test kit results. So they can make informed decisions on allocations of doctors, facilities, resources. So by opening this communication channel with healthcare officials, this technology will also provide patients with guidance on appropriate behavior in case of a positive test result, of course. Okay. Well, and looking at our um, new website, eh, where can you find all the information? We have a great online presence now since a few weeks combining the assets of both legacy Avery Dennison and the smart Trek websites on which you can find our product finder. There you can find all our products. You can access all the information of our RFID portfolio, but also at the website, you can find white papers, reports, customer success stories, all for healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. And looking at this product finder, you can very easily select your right product the right product for your application, you can start by selecting your industry, uh, the segment healthcare. And you already see then the products coming in. And then you can further filter on selecting the RFID frequency you're looking for. Uh, and here you can actually see this uh, temple loop product we spoke about uh, with a loop that you can actually integrate in your pharmaceutical packaging. And that actually can automatically detect when the packaging has been tampered with. And then the next step uh, can be that you select an antenna dimension that you know that can fit in your existing pharma label. So as you see, it works very easy. But of course, you can contact us anytime if you need any support or if you have selected a tag or a few tags, if you want any samples, want the pricing. Uh, we're always there to support you. Yeah. Before I move to the next part, speaking about self-adhesive materials to combine with the inlay, I do see that we still have a few questions, so let's try to tackle them now. Um, one question for me, can the RFID standard, uh, ah, okay, if you can use RFID, within a clean room environment where cleaning with uh, IPA is, is done. Uh, yes, uh, so there is always a difference between cleaning the surface 
and uh, having uh, the tag in directly the solvent, but cleaning uh, is not an issue because once more the tag is protected by the label and typically you are using filmic material so the carrier is a PET film so PET is pretty resistant to aggression of alcohol and if you are in a situation that you have really let's say a large quantity of alcohol or of solvent use you can protect the inlay. There is different way with overlamination uh, to protect the inlay for external aggression of solvent. So this is definitely something uh, you, you can handle. And another, yeah, another key question, indeed, a good question about cost. Uh, clearly, uh, RFID uh, is adding uh, some some cost. I can just give you an order of magnitude uh, so that you have a number in your hands. We speak about sense. And uh, for, let's say, uh, perhaps you can use this magic number uh, between five to 10, uh, depending cents, euro, depending obviously the nature of the RFID inlay you need and for the performance. Huh? We were speaking with Frank about UHF, about NFC. This is not exactly the same cost structure. And depending your application, you need to get the right design with the right antenna for the reading distance. All that is having some impact on the overall cost. But if you have to keep a number between five to ten cents, uh, is something to start. Uh, yeah, that that will work. So now let's move to the last part of the presentation. We have been speaking a lot about inlays, but as we are in the healthcare space. What also is important is the nature of the adhesive. So by default, we have Red Edison, uh, together with SmartTrack, are associating uh, the inlay with what we call a general purpose industrial adhesive that has food approval, but it's not specifically dedicated to the pharma space. In order to make the customization, we are supplying to our customers label converters some what we call transfer tape with pharma dedicated adhesives so that they can make the conversion the combination of the right inlay with the right adhesive for the pharma application and uh, perhaps i will re-insist and we re-explain what we mean by a pharma adhesive it's, a, it's an adhesive that we are managing in a different way in terms of uh, change management control. First, we give additional warranty in terms of the availability of the adhesive. And if there is a change on that adhesive, like typically uh, legislation is pushing us to change because of which, we will be notifying our customers one year prior to that change. During that year, we will keep supplying the existing specified adhesive. We will be handing over to our customers all validation reports to support the, this analysis, assessment. Is it a minor change? Is it a significant change? And does qualification need to take place? So this means that in terms of documentation, we come with business continuity plan, we come with risk assessment, validation report made also in our central lab for application test at the specific conditions of the application. And obviously we have compliance, we have certification being ISO 3826, being ISO 10993. So it will depend about the types of uh, certification you are looking for, for toxicology, low migration. But this is to some extent a package that is unique to what we really call pharma specific adhesives. And for some application, it's a must. That's why we are offering the two solutions on both sides, a dry inlay for RFID, transfer tape of the right pharma adhesive, so that combination can be done by the label converter, so that the end user, the pharmaceutical lab, can get what he needs for the application. And here, as an illustration, you have a few examples of those specific adhesives. First one, it's an adhesive dedicated to extreme low temperature, designed for cryogeny, the C2050P, in a transfer tape with two release liner on both sides. 
We have some other solutions like the S692NP, that is our blockbuster for typical uh, C-range application for low migration, small diameter. And then uh, some other examples like uh, a blood bag adhesive for primary labeling, meaning directly on the, on the bag, AL171. Another blockbuster S2000NP, that is our entry pharma adhesive for typical standard small diameter. And uh, another one also for low temperature. As you can imagine, uh, with uh, all the, the buzz around the uh, development of a vaccine for COVID, requests in those days around extreme low temperature, uh, like C2050P, are pretty high because we also get some uh, interesting uh, opportunities also to have some RFID tags in that overall supply chain. And perhaps to finish, uh, looking also at the same time at the questions, uh, Frank has introduced that we have a new uh, white paper available on the website. This white paper gives you an overview of all the points we have been explaining and discussing today with Frank, uh, focusing mainly on first patient safety and the overall supply chain effic efficiency. So before closing the webinar, I'm still going back to questions. We have a few other questions. Are there differences, a question from uh, Raymond, are there differences between RFID use in pharmacy and automotive? Uh, Frank, do you want to take this one? Yeah, thanks. Well, the the inlay sizes, of course, are many times different because in uh, the medical applications, you many times have smaller inlays. There are There is one big difference is that there are some standards in... Um, automotive from the VDA, the German Car Association, which actually subs yeah, uh, yeah, suggests to have high memory, yeah, to have a high memory capacity to encode. But I must say we also see, for example, BMW dividing now, going away from that. But yeah, well, the big difference is there are standards on the, the memory content in uh, automotive on how it's built up which are not there in the uh, pharmaceutical sector. Uh, but the type of inlays are used are generally the same ones. Eh? Uh, another big difference might be that uh, we don't see NFC being used a lot in the automotive. It's, uh, yeah, it's very B2B, business to business, components sellers to the big brand owners. In the pharmaceutical business, you see a lot of requests for interaction to the patients for clinical trials uh, for authentication like we spoke about so there we see a lot more requests and products for nfc okay thanks frank next question is back to the adhesive could you produce a wet inlay with a pharma dedicated adhesives so in theory clearly we can today there is not scale for this yet what we're expecting uh, in the coming months, years, is that indeed specifically offering a, a wet inlay using uh, the S692NP adhesive will be certainly uh, something helping the overall industry. But at the end, you have so much fragmented applications where you need really specific pharma adhesive for, the, for this application that we will not be able to manage that complexity and uh, label converters will be better equipped for us to manage this complexity and fulfill the need of, of the industry. And uh, to finish, two questions from Eduardo that are linked to each other. Speaking about sensing, I am, I am aware that you already have a UHF temperature sensor tag from SmartTrack, this is correct. Do you believe that HF NFC temperature tags will be available available at a reasonable cost soon. Uh, you know, I can tell you that we already have in the portfolio SmartTrack Everdenison some temperature tags working with NFC that are affordable in terms of cost. 
then you just, just need to define what you mean by affordable here. <laughs> but this is already existing and uh, some other technologies will be embedded on those platforms, like for UHF, NFC, but also playing with BLE. And I do see this is a second question also from Eduardo. For the future, do you think that in printed circuits or passive Bluetooth will bring temperature control tags in the short term? Yes, yes, and yes. And this is what Williot is doing. Yep. Williot has a technology that removes the need for battery, that gives you then the freedom to have a flexible inlay, therefore a label, and that label, among others, can measure temperature. So therefore, the cost equation is extremely interesting. The challenge is not yet ready for commercialization. So well, basically, within two years, it will be available to the entire market. And next year, the first steps are scaling pilot that we are doing with specific partners. So this is coming, but already today, solution mixing NFC with BLE, still using a battery, so still being more expensive than just a basic passive tag, but being affordable. And I will be happy to continue the conversation offline on this one. Uh, you know, looking also at the time, at the clock running, I think we are reaching uh, the end uh, of our webinar. And, uh, you know, Frank and I obviously are available to answer any question you may have. You see here our email address. So don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be happy to follow up. On this, thanks again for your interest. And uh, hopefully we will see you next time uh, for the fifth edition of our uh, healthcare webinar. Thank you also from my side. Looking forward to seeing you soon again. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.